All right, so today we are here in the big state of Texas and we are looking for big cards and hopefully some big collections. We have some things lined up really all over the spectrum. We have antique stores, we have collectors. There's just so much to dig into. I can't wait to get started. The history of sports cards goes back over 100 years. We are on the pursuit to find the biggest and most interesting sports card collections across the United States. Join us as we travel the large interstates and the narrow unpaved roads in our journey to continue chasing cardboard. Navasota, it's a sweet little town. Oh, I love the smell of vintage. This is the beauty of, of antique stores. We are here at the Navasota Emporium. Uh, so when I look at these antique stores, you just start to kind of get a lay of the land and see if there's any collectibles. And I can already kind of tell there's some things in here that are gonna be pretty fun. I'm not a doll person, like that stuff creeps me out. I mean, how does that not creep anybody out? So here we got some starting lineups. And these are unique because, I mean, these were super popular in the late 80s, early 90s, but they've become really a very unique set that people gravitate towards. Like in the in 88, there was a, a regional print run of certain teams and the Utah Jazz were only regionally printed. So you can go back and get Carl Malone and John Stockton and they're worth hundreds of dollars. And of course you got the big names like Michael Jordan, Ichiro, and King Griffey Jr. So what a lot of people do is they cut the card out and a card in good condition, you can send them to get graded. They're worth some pretty good money. They got some cards in, in a glass case. So yeah, there's some, there's some very unique stuff. Like these came out of 1980, 81 Topps basketball that came in under every pack and they're just little mini posters. So yeah, once again, here's a, here's a good reason and it's even open, so I'll probably take a look at it. I'm hoping I can get a pretty good deal on this. I'm thinking it's, I mean, it's pretty well centered. You stop into these places and that's authentic for sure. All right, so the Navasota Emporium totally delivered. We came in, I was able to get this 1963 Mickey Mantle for $100. Uh, they were super cool about it. It's about a $300 card. Made their day, obviously made mine. This was well worth the trip. This is why you stop at antique stores. So I've been a collector for over 20 years, really since I was about 18 years old when I really started taking it serious and had my own money. And I remember even back then, I would, I would stop in, driving from college to home, and I would pull off into an antique store or a thrift shop, and I would search for those bargains. So we have a really great lead with a guy named Frank, whose dad really went around for years buying up inventory from card shops. And he's got an entire garage full and potentially an entire storage unit full of cards that I can't wait to dig into. Frank, what's up? How you doing? Nice to meet you, buddy. Good to meet you. Thanks for bringing us out today. Oh, absolutely. Tis the season, huh? Yes, Grinch sir. Is out. So what's going on here? So you... There's a Jimmy Fox rookie right there. So whenever I walk into a garage like this and I see stacks of 3,200 count or 5,000 count boxes, instead of spending the time and going through and picking those cards out and trying to figure out what's in there, it's a lot easier to just go talk to the collector and get a sense of what he understands about the hobby. Since you still buy cards, what's what's kind of your current take on the sports card market? I don't see cards as like falling off. I mean, uh, they, they actually, everything is increasing, you know, I mean, of course it's gonna, it's gonna go up and down, you know, in, in market, but as far as like it falling off, I don't, I don't see anybody not buying. I see lots of people buying, you know. All right, so you got, we got vintage, we got seal, we got modern, we got all kinds of good stuff. Yeah, you got all here. kind of goodies in here. Kirsty Matthewson right there, that's a pretty cool piece. 40 play balls, we got 34 Gaudis. You got a Jim, uh, Jim uh, Charlie Graham right there, 39 play ball. Yeah. And there's some 51 and 52 Bowmans. There's some 52 tops up there. All right, so Frank's collection is pretty good. I'm starting to see some things already that kind of grab my attention, but there's one missing component and that is the big names and things that I think will move the needle. I'm not seeing that right now. What's uh, going on there with the burn marks? That's interesting to me. That, that, that actually, uh, is kind of like like this. Like I'll show you. This is a reprint set right here. Okay. Babe Ruth, and you see how it has the staples in it. Yeah. Well, you you look at that and you see how it, it, it you you do that and then basically it shows them swinging. Well, that's what these were originally. Oh, I see. So you got to remember, if you're ever out looking for these collections, a lot of them are going to be super old, 50, 60, 70 years old. You certainly can't expect them to be in great shape. 
But that doesn't mean you can't find some great cards in there. Always be looking for cards of the greats of all time. Mickey Mantle, Hank Aaron, Willie Mays, Roberto Clemente, guys like that. If you're a team collector, Yankees, Dodgers, all the popular teams from that time frame are super great to look for. Even if they're in rough shape, you may be able to find yourself some gold. What's the, what's going on here? What? Hanbok the Sports. Pretty oh, this is, is German and is actually uh, the 1932. Now, one thing I was interested in was the 1932 Sanella stuff. It's a German issue during the playing days of Babe Ruth. It's one of the more affordable pieces that you can get for Babe Ruth during his playing days. Now, he, again, values it pretty high. I need to do a little more research in the back end to make sure it's something I want to get, but it's something that drew my attention very early on in the negotiation. And it's all in German, so I'm sorry I can't read what it says. You didn't learn the language for this? Never learned the, never learned the language, so. <laughs> so Frank had a couple really neat things. He had a Havlicek ruler. He had a Nolan Ryan box metal set. Two things that he was really excited about, but I just don't know a lot about them. So I'm probably not as interested as he thinks. I got to about 50K in total value from my own, just quick look. The dollar, two dollar cards, I mean, you and I both know, no, it's just, this it takes too much time for me. There's a buyer out there that will want this, but that's probably not me. So it didn't work out with Frank, but that's okay because the community is a great place, even if you don't make a transaction work. Frank seems like an awesome guy, a collector that I'll probably stay in touch with, and I'm hoping that we'll be able to connect dots again and he can point me to some of the guys that he works with in the, in the local Houston community. Thank you so much, Frank. No problem. All right. This place is ginormous. Everywhere you look, aisles down for, <laughs> feels like a couple football fields long. I think there's over 250 different dealers that have booths here. And uh, yeah, we've already started to see some really cool card stuff. I can't wait to show you. You got two glass cases full. You have a whole entire box of star cards in here. So there's, there's a couple reasons why going to antique malls like this are really good. One, people tend to forget that, that they have cards here. And uh, prices change so fast in the hobby that you can find some pretty good values, some arbitrage opportunities, you know, from the prices just moving in the hobby. And two, people just don't come here, right? You don't see a lot of foot traffic. And so because of that, you see booth sales, you see right here, booth wide sale, 20% off. You see that pretty commonly across all these booths so you can find good, good discounts on some of these cards. So these are 1934 batter up cards. And these are really unique because they have a lot of Hall of Famers in them. They did not have Lou Gehrig because he currently had a, at the time he had a partnership with, with Gowdy. So he, didn't, he wasn't in there and Babe Ruth wasn't in there. They're pretty hard to find cards and they're unique because these were, they were made to be stand up cards for kids. And so you could pop them out and stand them up. So when you find a good condition card like this, it's pretty unique and you can see there's a green, there's a black, there's a red. There's, there were six different, seven different color variations of these cards. So I'm pretty intrigued by these. To send these in to get graded could be really worth my time. Grading is the process of taking a card and having it authenticated, encapsulated, and scored based on the card's condition. It's used to preserve the condition of the card, but also add value to cards that are truly in mint condition. There are plenty of options when it comes to grading cards like PSA or BGS, but the company we trust the most with our vintage and modern cards is SGC. They've been around for 20 plus years. They have a fast turnaround and they've always taken good care of us. All right, so we did it again, ginormous. The largest antique mall I've ever been at. I walked out with three 1934 cards that I, you just rarely see them. Probably be all in at a thousand bucks when it's all said and done after we grade them. You know, three cards that uh, I'm just really excited to own. A guy named Johnny started texting me. We tracked him down about five weeks ago, kind of initial conversation. We told him next time we'll be in Houston, we'll let him know. Well, long story short, the guy started texting me today asking if we were interested again. He's about an hour from us right now. He's already started texting me pictures. You always wanna get pictures of these things before you drive and like all of this is kind of meh. But as you look through here, I'm looking for something that might stand out. This right here is intriguing. Planet Metal Jordan is, can definitely be an anchor card here. And there's all kinds of stuff that I'm kind of interested in. We're gonna see if we can make this work. All right, 
right, so we are here. Uh, we were able to work out an op a, a deal with, with Johnny to close this basically a lot of five about 5,000 cards. Super cool guy. Uh, I'm excited because there's a lot of late 90s stuff, basketball stuff, some football stuff. Worked out a fair price, 1200 bucks, and it helps him out, it helps us out. We wrapped up a good night. So as we dug into the rest of the cards, there were some cards that were really pretty sweet. Cards like a 1998 Topps Chrome Refractor Destiny Tim Duncan rookie that you don't find very often in the wild. The 1973 Nolan Ryan that looked like it was in great condition. The Peyton Manning Collector's Edge rookie, number to 5,000. A couple more Peyton Manning rookies, a gold label, a black diamond, a score, a Fleer. In addition, there was stacks of really fun late 1990s, early 2000s autographs, refractors, and just overall some really fun stuff. Next time you're in Vegas and you want to hunt for some cards, go check out the awesome card shop. They're the hippest card shop near the Strip. Mention Chasing Cardboard and get a free bonus gift in your next order. Stop settling for normal and come be awesome at the awesome card shop. Now, back to the show. Mark. Hey, man. How's it going? Up? Hey. Bring us into this. Yes, sir. So this is Mark. Mark got connected to me through Frank. Frank was awesome. The deal didn't work out, but the community is such a great thing within our hobby. He trusted us, connected me with Mark, and here we are looking at his collection. How did you get the collection? So is this a combination of you buying over the course of the last two decades? Yes, from different places, from actually from different platforms, of, uh, local platforms, and then eBay. So okay. uh, well, you get pretty much everything. Kind of point me, show me around a little bit here. Okay. What's going on here? So basically, you got each box is like, this is a baseball autograph. Everything okay. in here is autograph and baseball. And then you go into uh, this box. This is all, all uh, 65 cards, basketball patch okay. cards. So looking at his collection, one of the things that stood out to me was that he had a pretty defined strategy. He was going around and doing what I do now, and that's buying collections. And he's done that for well over a decade. And you can see just from the sealed wax and just boxes of, of, of kind of semi-sorted stars, he was buying not just collections from people, he was buying collections from stores, from hobby shops, which is always kind of fun. So each box is actually, these are all uh, football patch cards, so it's over 200. Some of these are just basic higher end cards. Okay. And then you go in here, you got a, a box of graded, this is just baseball graded stuff. Okay. And then, uh, a little better uh, football stuff here and then basketball some of the vintage basketball stuff in here anywhere and anytime i could find someone selling cards on the local platforms or heard of someone selling something i go there and i usually don't even go through it i just had a little bit of money and back in those days really cards weren't really expensive you could buy a truckload for 500 bucks and you you'll get some good cards and mostly commons that's how I learned, and then you end up looking for the right cards. You know, the crazy thing is about two weeks ago, I was looking through one of these binders and I found that card in there. I said, man, that's gold refractor, so it must be worth something. Yeah. And I looked it up, and sure enough, it was, it was decent. The things that I gravitated towards were immediately the things on that middle table. Uh, I was starting to see some really cool cards, the Jacob de Grom, gold refractor, the Ken Griffey Jr. refractor, a lot of mid-modern, modern stuff that he had kept in really good condition caught my eye right out of the gate. You know, it's close to five to a thousand dollars if you get a grade and who knows where it might go. How, how, what would be the best? Cause there's so much I want to take here. Should we make offers on certain cards? So I went into this thinking, I'm going to pull some cards out of this and I'm going to find a way to kind of build up a pretty good lot to walk out with. But I could tell pretty quickly, Mark was interested in just selling everything. Sell it all. You want to sell it all? Yeah, sell them all and moving on to other things. So I would say, I don't know. I mean, what, what's, what, what are you thinking? I mean, uh, what's the ballpark? Give me 30,000 range. Okay. There's, there, there is some good stuff. You just got to dig through it, you know? Yeah. Uh, and okay. I wish I could find you some bigger cards. So obviously when you're connecting with a seller like this, you know that he knows what he's doing. And so you're, you're concerned. The back of my mind, I'm thinking, okay, is he taking a lot of this stuff out? Has he already sent a lot of this stuff in for grading? I'm not saying that Mark did, but it's definitely a concern as I started to go through this. What the heck did he pull out of that thing? At Top Shelf Bricks, we offer all major sports, WWE, Star Wars, and all things pop culture. Top Shelf has you covered with certified Fanatics memorabilia and unique collections. Visit TopShelfBreaks.com and use code CHASINGCARDBOARD at checkout for 15% off your entire order. 
Click it or hit it. Let's get back to the show. You've probably pulled, you pulled out the Brady's, the big, the big rookie cards, right? When it comes to the gone. rookies, the big ones, yes, the two top, but I mean, hey, I got you a rookie here. Hey. Here's a Walter Payton rookie. Tater chip, tater yeah. chip rookie. Okay, so you're thinking around 30, I'm about, okay, 15. I mean, can you meet somewhere closer in the middle? Do you think we can come? I, th I think I could, I mean, what about, what about 18? Ooh. Man, no, I can't do that. 25, uh, I could probably let it go, but won't tell my wife. But I want to go all cash, so if we can Oh, do, oh, you're do, doing cash. If we can do cash, I could do 20 for you. I'll okay. All, I'll take it all tonight. Oh, oh, let's load it up. I can do 20. 20? 20, I can do 20. Overall, the collection was great. There was a lot of things that I know really well. There was a lot of things that I thought were obscure enough for me to take a chance on. And there were a lot of things that were just sure bets. So I think all in all, I felt pretty comfortable with the deal. Oh yeah, he's getting a great deal. And as a sport guy for 22 years, I know what I got there, but I gotta move it. I can't sit on it. Everybody wants a cherry pick, and I, I don't wanna do that. Mark is a great guy. Somebody that I think I could probably sit down with and talk cards with for hours upon hours. How long did that take? Two and a half hours? Two and a half hours <laughs> later, huh? What an awesome few days in Texas. So here's a recap. At the antique shops, I snagged a 1963 Mickey Mantle for a hundred bucks. Easily worth up to 300. Then the batter up cards for 700. Being in such nice conditions, I'll get those graded and possibly double my money. With Frank, we couldn't work out a deal. But Mark delivered with one heck of a large collection, a collection that I'm still going through. But I've already found cards like a Jacob deGrom Gold Refractor Rookie, an amazing 1997 Topps Chrome Refractor King Griffey Jr., Jerry Rice Rookie, a variety of Tom Brady's, and a sneaky good Michael Jordan starting lineup card. And I can't forget Johnny. What a pleasant surprise. His collection came through with the Randy Moss Auto that's already sold for $450. The Priest Holmes one of one that went for $150. Allen Iverson Black Diamond for 400 Overall, I expect this week to net a healthy profit. Plenty of new cards for set collector friends, and most importantly, outstanding additions to my own personal collection. I was extremely surprised with the size of this state, especially when you start driving from north to south. But we were able to connect the dots from Frank to Mark, and even a surprise bottom of the ninth inning collection from a random text that we got. You couple that with the antique stores and all the other fun things along the road, and this has me excited about what Chasing Cardboard is all about.